What's up, all you happy people? <laughs> when I was like 12, there was a song that I used to love to hear come on the radio. It was called uh, Thuggish Ruggish Bone. That's right. I was in a different place back then, but I'm sure you understand, as most of us were when we were that age. But point being, I would sit in front of the stereo for three hours or so, listening to the radio, waiting for that song to come on so I could take a cassette tape <laughs> and press the record button so I could listen to the song whenever I wanted, so I could record it, basically. And I said back then, man, it would be awesome if I could listen to this song whenever I wanted without having to go through all kinds of trials and tribulations in order to record it. I was just thinking about it and now I get on my phone and I hit a button that opens up an app called Google Play Music and any song that I ever love, cherish, and want to listen to, I just type it in and hit play. How amazing is that? Years later, when I was in my earlier years of high school, I was in New York and I was reading an, uh, uh, the paper and I ran across an article that detailed a new concept or invention, I guess it was, that would enable the user to ride around in their car and not have to deal with all the BS commercials that they hear every five minutes or have to listen to the same song over and over again 15 times a day seven days a week it was called serious Ra serious satellite radio the competitor at the time was XM uh, satellite radio I got so excited about this I jumped out of my seat I ran over to my dad and I said I pointed at the article I said you need to invest in this. <laughs> this is going to be huge. You should definitely put money into this. You don't have to listen to commercials. You don't have to yada, yada, yada. You know, it's it's seven days a week. You get, I don't know, 140 channels or, or whatever. Fast forward a few years later, eventually those two companies, Sirius and XM, merged, became one big conglomerate. Now, XM, Sirius, what is it called now? Is it just Sirius XM? Whatever it's called. Comes stock in basically every American made car that you can purchase today. Needless to say, I was blown off. I was, I don't know, what was it like 14 or 13 at the time? Something like that. And uh, yeah, it, was, it didn't get invested in. My dad actually watches this channel, uh, to my understanding. So <laughs> maybe we'll talk about this video later. In any case, the internet is maybe about, about 25 years old. I am one of the lucky ones, if you will, to remember what the world was before the birth of the internet. Pat Green and Julian, welcome to Database. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Now, Julian, I see you have your computer linked to the telephone line. Can you tell us how you did that? Yes, well, it's very simple, really. I remember going to, being in the mall, wanting to get in touch with a friend to see where they were because we had to set times to meet people at that, at, at that stage in our lives. And I stuck a quarter into a payphone so I could call his house to see if he left yet. Or I'd have to type in a code, uh, after typing, after uh, call, calling a number so I could page him or her or whoever. Sometimes I cannot be as one with cool, too busy with the grind. But when I shake loose, I home in on cool like a bird dog with my Motorola pager. It's how I stay connected with my very cool friends. So when my Motorola pager beeps or vibrates, I know that somewhere coolness is calling. Get a Motorola pager and know. Now, not knowing is not cool. Motorola, what you never thought possible before cell phones were prevalent, or in existence, really. 
all this is said to point a finger towards Bitcoin. I will not miss this train. <laughs> Definitely hopping aboard this. And I say all this to try and express to you how important it is that you also not take your whole life savings or whatever because I'm not I'm not a professional investor or a fortune teller if you will not to take your whole savings and dump it all into cryptocurrency but to express how important it is to at least begin to take bitcoin and cryptocurrency seriously to this day i still mention cryptocurrency to people it still feels like i'm talking to a brick wall i would hope the ones that have subscribed to this channel understand where i'm coming from but this is how situations happen where people have friends and then all of a sudden they're like Oh my God, he got rich overnight. No, he didn't. It never happens like that. But people tend to not listen to an idea or not accept an idea that's not widely accepted by the mass population. That is very dangerous. In any case, I want to take a look at Bitcoin. We're not going to go full speed into it, but just to take a look at where it started and where it is now so let's have a look shall we <laughs> hey you guys <laughs> so this is the trading view which is a great site to take a look at i think you can look at regular stocks and things on here too but they also include cryptocurrency which is wonderful for what we need it for today but we want to take a look at Bitcoin. Here you can see Bitcoin to US dollar up here at the top. But red and green candles are ups and downs. I'm going to assume that you already have a... Okay, no, I'm not. Okay, look. Green, <laughs> green candle means it started from the bottom and then it went up. A red candle, and all these ticks here are referred to as candles. Are, it means the price started at the top and went down. The tiny little cattail kind of looking situations that you see coming out of each one are minuscule amounts of time in which the price left the main body of, of it. I don't know, it could have been minutes, you know, minutes, seconds, I think is how it works. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm not a trader per se, but um, or, I, or do this professionally by any means, but in any case, that gives you an idea of what we're looking at here. The price is over here, and the dates are down here. You can change the day and the date here, one day, by hours, minutes, you know, and uh, it'll change the candlesticks accordingly. This is a 30-second chart, so each one of these ticks represents uh, 30 minutes, respectively. Uh, but I want to work with, uh, actually, maybe weeks. Let's do weeks because I want to get a huge overview basically of Bitcoin. See, now we're, we're looking at years here. And again, why I wanted to explain the importance of not necessarily dumping your whole financial well-being into cryptocurrency, but at least making it part of a good part of your portfolio or taking it seriously. Have, take some serious consideration into why you should invest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. When I say Bitcoin, I also refer to cryptocurrency a lot. There are a lot of coins that are very great, good prospects uh, for uh, future earnings. So, as you can see down here, uh, if we go down to 2012, we can see the price hovering at $4.15 in 2012. This was, looks like January... It says here, January 2nd, 2012. This uh, stayed about in that area or so, you know, for a while. And as you can see, just as Jay Parr, who is a, a viewer also, he also has a channel that you should check out. Awesome scenery on his, uh, 
on his videos, he just goes out in the middle of nowhere, basically. <laughs> I think it's Canada. And he just either kayaks or, you know, builds fires. And just the quality of the videos are awesome. In any case, uh, he mentioned that if maybe we should take this Bitcoin chart, cut everything off of it as far as names, and see what the average person would say as far as uh, investing in it, if it looks like a good investment, and not tell them what it is as far as it being Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. But anyway... Uh, 2013, uh, we had some ups and downs, you know, it, at this time, at this point in 2013, which is, uh, what is that, March, it looks like, it's at almost $100. So, it, within a year, it had jumped from $4 to $100. Within a year. Of course, the price drops back down, then it just goes ridiculously crazy starting around november ish of 2013 and jumps all the way from 160 70 dollars 170 dollars is where i have it here and then jumps all the way up to freaking almost a thousand dollars and even if you want to count the small cattails at the top almost eleven hundred dollars then if I'm not mistaken, around this time was when Mt. Gox was hacked. I'm not going to go into that. There are tons of videos on that online, but things happen. You know, things happen. And that happened. Okay, it is what it is. But it crashed the price for a minute. But with something as profound as Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, the technology that it encompasses, it wasn't going to stay down long. People still knew the value of Bitcoin. So it went up, down, went up, down, and it crashed down here to about $200. Point is, no matter what happens, it still didn't drop down past $185 per Bitcoin. How wonderful would it be to see a Bitcoin worth $185 again, right? <laughs> In any case, after that, 2015, we see this rise. And let me take one of these freaking uh, trend lines here. And if we just put a place a trend line under, there we go. I'm just gonna do, just do a general one here so we can get a, a good sense of the uptrend it's had. But if you take a look at this trend line here, How many stocks can you go Google search for me now? I don't care what it is. Um, Apple, Microsoft, just anything you can think of. Matter of fact, I challenge you to find a stock that looks as good as this one right now, as good as Bitcoin. In the past, I don't know, three years or so, even not even three in two years. Look what it's done in two years. So here we have we sit at a price of when it started to climb at it was about two thirty. If we take this sucker all the way up to the top, which is today, basically. From two hundred and thirty dollars in 2015 to over eighteen hundred dollars as it sits today. Today, Bitcoin is worth more than an ounce of gold. Worth more than a tangible ounce of gold, which brings me back to my main point being that the Internet is brand new in the grand scheme of things. We are still primitive. We are still primitive as much as you want to admit it or not. As technologically advanced as we feel that we are as a species, as a civilization now, we ain't seen shit yet. Nothing. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to, the message I'm trying to convey when I mention the state of music as it was before. CDs and cassette tapes and where we are now to where I can listen to whatever the hell I want and just pay $10 a month. Any song ever made, pretty much. Everything transitioned to the internet, everything. And now money is beginning to make that transition. 
it started with credit, credit cards, electronic banking, and now it is becoming fully electronic. We're doing away with paper money. Imagine standing behind somebody in Walmart and they pull out a checkbook. When was the last time you saw somebody write a check? <laughs> Nobody writes checks anymore, you feel me? So that's what paper fiat currency is going to be compared to Bitcoin now and cryptocurrency. This is going, going to be the new money. This is the new money. This is why it's so important for you to invest. I can't express it enough. I said all I can say. I know this video is hella long already anyway, so I'm going to let it go at that. And later we will discuss more about uh, trading view and, and Bitcoin as it stands now. There are ups and there are downs. But ultimately, as you can see here, there is no stopping. it. People are projecting Bitcoin to re hit 500,000 US dollars per Bitcoin by the year 2030. And I really don't see it not... I, I don't see that being a stretch. I personally feel like it's very possible that Bitcoin, a Bitcoin could be worth upwards of a million dollars before I lay my head for the last time. In any case, this is Philosopher King, Cloud9 Miner. If you made it this far in the video, kudos to you. I greatly appreciate you watching. In any case, um, till we speak again, take care. So lonely and a smile